My name is Rob Thacker and I'm one of the CFA instructors here at Fitch Learning. In terms of the purpose of this session, uh, we're going to cover why do the CFA, what are the benefits, but more importantly, how can we help you to ensure you're passing these examinations first time. So what's covered in the syllabus? Well, in terms of the, uh, the syllabus content, it's very wide ranging. You see it ranges from ethics, quantitative methods, economics, financial reporting analysis, the asset classes, and also managing that portfolio as a whole. So a whole wide range of different topics and subjects covered. In terms of if we focus on level one, you'll see there that it's made up of two three-hour exams, so six hours in total, and in total, 240 questions. So you're looking at, on average, on average, I stress, one and a half minutes per question. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of time, and it isn't if you don't take the right approach. But I'll be taking you through an approach where you can save time and make sure that you comfortably pass the exam itself. Uh, in terms of levels two and three, you'll see a lot of the same topics there. The exam format is different. At level one, it's multiple choice, and it's an A, B, C format. With level two, again, multiple choice, but a vignette style or case study style. So what happens there is you get two or three pages of information followed by six multiple choice questions. For level three, the morning exam is written. Not really essay, it's more report writing style, but it is written, while the afternoon exam is similar format to the level two, case study, vignette style, multiple choice format. Now, you may have heard about the global pass rates. They're not the most encouraging. Typically, they're around the 40% mark. So everyone taking the CFA exam globally, only around 40% are getting through. So why is that? You know, everyone is taking it, are bright people, you know, they're, they're committed, and yet only around 40% are getting through. Well, there's some really good reasons. Classic reason is starting too late. You need to make sure that you can fit in the 300 hours that are recommended by the CF Institute. And that means you need to put out a time plan. Typically, most people will start five to six months before the exam date. You need to be realistic. You need to make sure you can fit that time in. Another pitfall is having the time, but doing the wrong things. So working inefficiently, not having the right study structure, focusing on the wrong areas uh, are all classic mistakes. Now, we'll take you through, I'll take you through an approach where you'll avoid those pitfalls. You know, what's the efficient way of getting through, ensuring you've got the right study structure and focus on the right areas? We'll take you through that. Also, it's not just about knowledge and knowing the knowledge, it's also about application. You've got to be able to apply that knowledge. Therefore, question practice is crucial. You've got to be able to practice questions all the way through your studies. Big mistake people do, they cover the content and only in the final month do they really start thinking about practicing questions and mock exams. To be honest, that's way too late. You should be practicing questions from day one. You can cover a chapter, a few pages, and then practice the end of chapter questions. And that's what you should be doing. You know, practicing those questions all the way through your journey, right up to the exam. So we will make sure that you avoid those pitfalls. You know, I'll talk more about our approach, how we're very suc successful in getting people through the CFA exams in the most efficient way with the right study structure uh, and making sure that you're exam focused all the way through. We have a tried and tested teaching approach to get you through the exam successfully. And what I'd like to do here is give you a short snippet of how we approach it. Our starting point is making sure that we are focused in terms of what could come up in the exam. So you've got to start off with the learning outcome statements, the LOSs. Learning outcome statements. 
Now, these are from the examining body themselves, the CFA Institute. And here's a, an example. Here's reading 27 from study session 8, and here are the learning outcome statements listed relating to that reading. And the first thing we'll do is we'll highlight and make sure you know how it could come up. And here you can see that the way this reading is going to be tested is primarily narrative. Yeah. Compare, classify, describe, contrast, distinguish, describe, describe. You can see here that there's a heavy emphasis on narrative type questions. Now that won't be the case for all the readings. Some of the readings are very computational, some are very narrative, some may have a balance. Yeah? Also, when we talk about classify cash flows, that could be with some simple numbers. Yeah? You might have to do some simple calculations of numbers in order to classify those cash flows. So that's the starting point. You've got to know the, the, the content, you've got to know the learning act statements, and you've got to be thinking about how it could come up in the exam. Then we give you the knowledge. The knowledge here is making sure you can address the learning outcome statements. So let me take you through the top one. Let's take you through comparing cash flows and how you can classify cash flows in relation to a cash flow statement. Um, you'll also see there there are some additional learning outcome statements. For example, convert, analyze, calculate. These are much more computational types of questions. And also, you can see here, interpret, interpret, more narrative types of questions. Okay, so let's take you through that first learning outcome statement, LOS, that we referred to. Uh, you'll notice here a reference to that learning outcome statement. Eight is the study session, so it happens to come from study session eight. 27 is the reading, reading 27, and A, that's the first learning outcome statement. You might remember it refers to classifying cash flows within a cash flow statement. Well, with a cash flow statement, there are three categories. There are cash flows related to operating activities. These are known as CFOs, cash flows for operating activities. Examples, um, revenue being received, payments to suppliers, wages paid, you know, typical operating cash flows. There'll also be investing cash flows, cash flows for investing activities, CFIs. Typical examples, CAPEX, capital expenditure, you know, purchases and sales of property and equipment would be typical investing cash flows. And also there'll be financing cash flows, cash flows for financing activities. And that could be equity or debt issuances or redemptions uh, would, to be, would be typical financing cash flows. So we need to be able to identify cash flows and be able to classify them as either CFOs, CFIs or CFFs. Okay, right, that's some of the knowledge. What we also need to do is be able to take that knowledge and be able to apply it to differing accounting standards. And you may be aware that there are two types of accounting standards. US GAAP, US generally acceptable, yeah, generally accepted accounting principles and policies, and IFRSs, International Financial Reporting Standards. And for this exam, you need to be comfortable with both, yeah, US GAAP as well as IFRSs. Now, the good news is there's a lot of convergence. On the whole, the accounting standards are the same. However, there are some differences, and the exam will play on that. For instance, you need to know the difference in terms of how you classify interest and dividends. So let's take you through it. Let's get the knowledge. So with US GAAP, if we take interest paid, under US accounting, that has to be classified as a cash flow related to operating activities. The rationale, paying interest is a typical operating activity that most businesses will do. You know, they'll have bank loads, pay bank loans and pay interest. 
Similarly, interest received, CFO, typical operation for a business. Dividends paid, CFF, a cash flow relating to financing. Rationale is paying your equity holders, which is a type of financing activity. And finally, dividends received, CFO. It's a typical operating activity. Companies will typically be investing in, in holding shares, receiving those dividends, typical operating cash flow. Now you could yeah, um, dispute where to put those on the cash flow statement, but under US accounting, they're very prescriptive. They're telling you this is where it goes. Now as an analyst, and remember it's an analyst exam, you might want to reclassify. You might think, actually, I think it's more, for example, dividends received, you might argue, might be more an investing cash flow. Well, that's the role of the analyst to reclassify. But from an accounting perspective, under US accounting, that's where it goes. Now, how does that compare and contrast with international financial reporting standards? Well, first of all, you can do exactly what you do under US accounting. Yeah. Absolutely fine. But international accounting standards acknowledge you might want to put it in a different place under, you know, under your cash flow statement. For example, interest paid, you could argue, well, surely that's a financing type of cash flow. And IFRS would say, fair enough, you could put it there. So they give you a bit of flexibility. Interest received, you could argue, is an investing cash flow. Yeah. You could be, for example, uh, buying some bonds and receiving the coupons, receiving the interest as an investment. So therefore, put it under CFIs. Dividends paid, you could argue, well, don't most businesses have to at least think about paying out dividends? Couldn't, be, couldn't you argue it's an operating cash flow? Sure, put it there. And dividends received, sure you could say, if you bought these shares, it could be as a type of investment and therefore record it as an investing cash flow. Now there are pros and cons with this approach yeah, in terms of IFRSs, because as an analyst, if you're comparing two companies, well, where did they put the interest paid? One company might have put it under CFO, Another company might put it under CFF. So, you know, you need to, again, analyze that and, and make sure you're comparing like with like. So there are pros and cons with either approach, but it is what it is. Under accounting standards, that's where you can classify these items. Right, okay, that's the knowledge. So we've looked at um, what could be tested, the learning outcome statements. We've moved to make sure we've got the knowledge to address that learning outcome statement. The last stage and the most important stage, can you apply it in an exam? And that's what we move to. We need to look at exam style questions. So we need to be able to apply the knowledge to a typical type of question. So let's have a look at a question. Uh, here's um, a Exam style question, you know, level one, they're multiple choice, you're gonna get three responses, A, B, or C. It's a narrative question here. So let's take you through it. How are dividend payments reported on the statement of cash flows under US GAAP and IFRSs? Okay, well, we've just been through it. Let's see what we remember. Might remember in terms of dividend payments under US GAAP, it's a financing cash flow. That's where you have to record it in a set of financial statements. But you might remember with IFRSs, you can do the same as you would do with US GAAP, or you might feel dividend payments, typical operating activity, I'll put it under CFOs. Okay, that's the knowledge. Let's apply it to questions. So let's take you through this one. Okay, A, operating activities under US GAAP. No, we know that's wrong. It's financing. So I can stop there. Move on to B, 
Financing activities under US GAAP, great. Operating or financing activities under IFRS, great, I'm happy with that. But good exam technique, if you've got time, have a look at C, just make sure that is wrong. Financing activities under US GAAP, okay, I'm happy with that, but I'm not happy about investing activities under IFRSs. And that's an approach you should be taking, yeah? Look at the requirement first, take your knowledge, be able to apply it to the scenarios, make sure you always review all three options, and there we go, we'd go for B in this, in this question. Okay, now, you might feel that's fairly straightforward, and in the exam, you'll get some fairly straightforward questions. You'll also get some maybe moderate, more challenging questions, and do expect some, not many, but some really challenging questions. So let's look at a, a, a tougher type of questions, more on the moderate to challenging side. Something like this question. Okay, looks a lot more to it than, than the, the previous question. However, I'm going to show you an approach where even with these types of questions, you can get through them very quickly, very efficiently to the right answer, given the time constraints. So, first thing you should always do, start off with a requirement. Okay, I'm looking at US GAAP only. So under US accounting, and I'm only looking at CFFs, cash flows for financing. Okay, so what I need to do here is go through each item and identify those financing cash flows. Okay, let's start off with dividends paid. Just gone through it. Hopefully you remember, absolutely, under US GAAP, we would expect we would expect that to be a financing, financing cash flow. And it's paid, so I'm just going to be careful with the signage here. That is an outflow, so I'll put minus there. Common stock issued. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the terminology, but under US accounting, common stock are shares that are issued. Um, if you're more familiar with the European um, terminology, we, we would call that ordinary shares. Yeah? So be aware, ordinary shares, common stock, same thing. These are shares being issued by the company. Is that financing cash flow? Absolutely. And bear in mind, that's the same under US GAAP and IFRSs. Both would consider that to be financing cash flow. Can't really get more of a financing cash flow than shares being issued. And of course, that's cash coming in, so that's a positive. Yeah. Now, equipment purchased, well, that's a type of capital expenditure. That would be a CFI, so I'm going to ignore that. But bonds issued, again, this is debt issuance, also financing cash flow, and it's the cash coming in. Having a quick look at the other areas, I'll quickly see that none of these relate to financing. Fixed assets sold, that's a CFI, investing cash flow, and the rest are really related to operating cash flows, so I can ignore the rest. And I'm done. So I've got three cash flows I've identified, just need to be a little bit careful with the signage, and I'll see that's a net cash flow of 140. So with a bit of practice, you can do these fairly, fairly swiftly, and therefore you don't need to be overly concerned about the time pressure in the exam if you have the right technique. So that's our approach. Step one, know what could be tested. So know the learning outcome statements and in particular the command words. Step two, have the knowledge. That, you know, that relates to the learning outcome statements. So make sure you've got the knowledge there. And most importantly, step three, application of that knowledge to exam style questions. Okay, so how can we help you get through these challenging but very rewarding exams? Well, the key is approach and making sure you've got the right approach and technique all the way through your studies. So we will map out the journey from start to finish and make sure we support you all the way through from day one. It's important not to think about it, about just coming along to a course. That's maybe part of, of your study support, 
but it's not the be all and end all. You really need to support all the way through. And how do we achieve that? Well, we do this through a blended learning approach. On day one, you will receive login details for our online study portal and mobile app. And that will be the hub of your study resources that you need to get through the exam. On there, you'll have instructor recordings as well as live webcasts of any courses. You'll have an extensive question bank of over 3,000 questions. Uh, you'll have the study materials. Uh, you'll have help desks so you can access and, and contact any of the CFA instructors that we have globally. And also available is all of that content offline as well through a mobile app. So you can study not just online, but also offline. So that's really important. You've got that um, study support from day one. And in there as well, you'll have the study journey. We will map out your plan, your program, and it'll be unique to you. It will work out from day one of logging in to the exam date, what's the study plan for you? How much time have you got? And therefore how much um, study structure do you need at which times? Be prepared. We will give you all the materials that you need. You won't need anything in addition to get through these exams. So I've mentioned the questions, we'll give you study notes, we'll give you revision guides, we'll give you an exam companion book which will guide you through the curriculum books, everything that you need in terms of materials, digitally as well as hard copy are available. If you need instructor support, if you want a CFA instructor helping you get through these exams, Absolutely. You can do that live, yeah, face to face, physically, or you can do it virtually like we're doing here via a recording or a live webcast. And again, we've got a whole range of different options there in terms of classes, but also support um, virtually, you know, digitally through online recordings and live webcasts. Diagnostics. It's really important that you know how well you're doing at each stage. And we do that with performance metrics. We'll actually tell you if you are on track, behind track, or even ahead of track compared to our peer group of over 3,000 candidates. And it's a simple traffic light system. Yeah, for each topic, we will tell you, green, great, you're on track. Amber, you're okay, you need to do a little bit more and what you need to do more, and red, you're behind, you need to do this, this and this to get back on track. And again, that will be bespoke to your study plan that's designed on the online portal. Support, you need that all the way through, so you will have via the online help desk access to all of the CFA instructors we have globally in all of our offices based in London, New York, Singapore and Dubai. And the relevance for you, wherever you're located, is mean, it means that you've got round-the-clock support. So, for example, let's say you're based in London, then if you submit a help desk question in the evening, it's probably more likely that our New York office will pick it up. Alternatively, if you submit it very, very early in the morning, then it's more likely Singapore or Dubai will pick it up. So wherever you're located, you get that round-the-clock support. And revision, it's going to be crucial to make sure that you have revision guides, you've got mock exams, you've got question practice, you've got study tips, everything to make sure in the final month of your studies, you've got everything you need to pass the exam. In terms of our tutor faculty, our instructor faculty, as mentioned, there are over 20 of us full-time faculty here at Fitch Learning dedicated to get you through the CFA programme. Here are some of my colleagues. You'll notice all of our faculty are CFA chart holders. Yeah, we've experienced the pain ourselves. And we all have been teaching for many, many years getting candidates through the CFA programme. So whoever you have access to, whoever you have any interaction with, you're guaranteed 
that they are going to be an expert in that field and make sure that they give you the best support and guidance to get you through. Okay, well, I hope you found that of use and helpful for achieving your aim of getting through the CFA exams at the first attempt. Please do contact us. We're very happy to give more help and more information if we can, and, and, and we certainly want to do that. Here are our contact details. Uh, uh, look at your local office there. We have offices in London, in New York, in Singapore, and Dubai. And wherever you're located, remember we have a solution for you. Whether it's classroom or whether it's online, we can give you that study support. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Hope you found it useful and hopefully see you on one of our future CFA courses. Thanks. Mm -hmm.